and humidity well could be a factor in this one tonight, appropriately so, as the Red Hot Fire come in to take on the hometown Columbus crew. We're gone for the year. Spee's a late scratch. Yeah, Spee's is a late scratch, and so we see Arietta in. Oduro move to the outside, but he will find his way to Chris Rolfe, who's been an absolute crew killer over the years. Four, or excuse me, eight goals against the black and gold. Rolfe figures into this mix, but the attack's going to come from the outside. That kickoff is brought to you by Pepsi, the official beverage of Major League Soccer, and the Columbus crew. We are underway this hot and humid Saturday evening here in Columbus. Maduro, good defensive pressure and a chance to put his team in the lead. Down it goes. Referees there. Points to the penalty spot. This is the fourth time this season that Austin Berry has made a mistake and has created a 1v1 chance for the opponent. Sean Johnson has seen this before as recently as Wednesday that resulted in a goal for Colorado. How about Dominic Oduro stripping Barry, the young defender who has admitted to being weak back there with not making decisions quick enough, puts Sean Johnson in a hole, the penalty kick awarded, and the crew with an opportunity early. Has been the spot kick taker all season long, did have one turned away, steps up, shoots, and he scores! I think Frank Klopas said in the pregame, he told me, we can't give up anything early. Well, that plan of action has already gone down the tubes. Barry gives up the ball, or give Oduro credit for stripping him with some late decision-making. And I don't know if Sean Johnson got a hold of him, but if Dom sold the foul, so be it. And as you pointed out, Dwight, the referee was on top of the play, so whatever he saw, he felt compelled to blow the whistle. Lorenowitz scored the winner against Columbus, and here's an opportunity. The generally calm Andy Greenenbaum really agitated about what he feels was some unnecessary contact right in front. That was a high kick by McGee. Hair crashing from the backside. Lorenowitz, he can shoot from distance. Instead, he pushes it off. Will he go to goal? Yes, he will! Oh, he stung that one, didn't he? You called it. He just absolutely has no hesitation. You kind of forget a guy who's sitting 25 yards off the goal line. Everyone has tucked in. They've found their attacking players. They've got their marks, but Lorenowitz just sits out there and waits for that deep ball. Duca, shot block. Transition opportunity for Columbus. And Arietta with the quick release for Domodoro. Gets to the 1v1 position. Puts to the right. Shot right at the keeper. And after spelling it out in front of himself, Johnson dives to cover up. That's a, sir, a terrific service outside, and here it is. Oduro going 1v1 with an inside back. Austin Berry finds himself up against one of the fastest players in the league, and Oduro's able to get a nice shot off. Sean Johnson with loose hands at first, but able to keep that one out of danger. Duca. Wonderful on the ball. Shot deflected. Oh, good save. Andy Greenabond. And that's all Greenabond. Chad Marshall, I'm not sure, was certain that Duca was going to take that ball all the way in. Had his back turned to him. You mentioned in one of your keys that central defensive tandem for the Columbus crew. I think Williams and Marshall showing a little respect to Dilly Duca there. Neither one was about to step in on him. We just go at their central defense. Lynn Pear's got room. Serves a pretty good ball, and it's in the back of the net. Dilly Duca draws the fire level in minute 52. Well, maybe the crew wasn't ready for the extra spice coming out of the locker room. How about Lynn Pear by himself? He could go to the goal line if he wanted to. Threads a nifty ball through the defenders, and on the other end, Dilly Duca is able to finish it up. Boy, that is quite the ball, and Duke is by himself at the far post. Out on the two-game 
road trip to Kansas City and Los Angeles. Lynn Pierre, another good ball in, and it's two to one. Mike McGee. And Joel Lindbergh has turned this game around. Yet another great ball by Lindbergh, this time finding McGee at the far post. And with his chest able to tuck that ball in. McGee with goal number 10 on the season, his fourth in a fire uniform. the fire that are attacking the central defense of the Columbus crew. Big Wayne take that space. Has helped wide left. Towards the middle. Shot deflection perhaps, but straight at Johnson. I like that effort by Arietta. Real patient. Takes the time to create the angle for himself. Get away from Anibama and launches the shot the deflection you never know that's the second time a ball's been served in in the second half with a deflection how about that pass wow. and a pretty good one from Arietta. Higuain says handball referee says not this time you know we see it referees don't like to give out two penalties in a game last opportunity well the argument by the crew is that Lorenowitz's right hand is up and away from his hips. And it's in motion. And it's in motion toward the ball. And that's where the argument has actually got some, it's got a foundation. It's got some meat to it. Iguain's shot is parried wide by Johnson. Duca against Barson. Set up pass. Top of the box. Shot good save by Greenenbaum. Full extension to his right. Absorbing some pressure for a bit. Chicago looks pretty good the other way. Madura trying to get in behind. And does a pretty good job in the end. Can he get the shot off? He does right at the keeper who got it in hockey. Terms with the blocker. And Greenenbaum quickly out to Iguain. Finds an oar. Lots of options. Go short square left. Captain against the grain, and Orr with the right shoe! It's just off the mark. I love the way Iguain lifts the ball, and he lifts this one with the outside of his right foot. Anor with so much confidence on that flank. Terrific grip. Resulted in, you don't see it too often, but it resulted in two quick goals, and then Columbus was chasing the game, and they weren't really able ever to get back to where they were in the first half. It's, it's a frustrating tale of two halves, really. There's your Barbasol man of the match, Dominic Aduro.